Even though even though we we're there, we we're in the water, we we're you know, playing in the water and having fun, I still um got my fly rod out and um got a fish called a catabac. I thought it was a wabri. That's the two local names for those fishes, but um I got one so that's what I'm gonna talk about a little bit in this video. Um differences between a spinning rod and a fly rod. Uh spinning rod as um you're going to see there on the screen spinning rod is uh, um, typically between six and seven feet long um, usually six feet six inches those are excellent rods for catching peacock bass and um, in Guyana catching snapper and um, it allows you to cast all day it's very light um, this is a very good rod and um, the the fly rod that I use is a single-handed overhead casting rod. Um, the reason why I said it's a single-handed rod, as you can see, there is only one um, one piece of cork handle at the back of the rod. Um, that's used. That's that's a recent model that's used for casting overhead with with one hand. Um, whether you choose to cast in an angle like this or an angle like that or an angle over here. Um, the rod is nine feet long, so your tippet is over your head, so it's an overhead cast. Um, there's a the, the reason why I differentiate that from, let's say, a spay rod. Um, a spay rod is a two-handed um, fly rod. It's typically between twelve feet and fifteen feet long. So the the fly rod that I use today, that's a nine feet fly rod. Um, that's extremely long compared to a typical six and a half foot um, spinning rod but it's nowhere close to what um, the original um, fly rod um, looked like the original um, double-handed spay rods they originated I think it's the 1800s in mid 1800s in Scotland it's what was called the spay river um those rods were 15 to 18 feet long and um, they weighed about four four to five pounds so uh, a 12 footer or 13 or a 15 foot spay rod today is um it's so much lighter it's so easier it's so elegant to cast compared to what it used to be and then um and then that was um broken down to a single-handed overhead um, casting rod and what happened some folks um, wanted to have the option to um, have the the double-handed spare rod but still do overhead casting with that and in comes the switch rod switch rods are um, like between the eight and a half or nine feet to twelve feet rods those are rods that they, they can switch that's why they're called switch rods so those are rods that um they can allow you to do spay cast snap t cast circle t cast and um those kinds of casts with the longer rods but if you want to do an overhead cast um you can use it to switch out from the double handed casting to the the overhead overhand overhead casting and those allows you um to do that so that's why i differentiate single handed rod from double handed rod This shark, this is just a single-handed over, over, overhead casting rod. But they got them two-handed spay rod, right? They got a little handle in the back here, right? The smallest one is 12 feet, there's 9 feet. But the spay rod now, the smallest one is 12 feet to like 15 feet. So I guess so you see what cast over me yet, sir? Farming and loop behind me and then loop in front of me. The spay rod now, he's got to walk it like like they got like different kind of cast like yeah, one name snap tea yeah. one name circle tea so yeah. you just gotta work with two and so you understand I, I did, and I one and see how far this one can actually go by the post mm. the, the 12 foot rod or the 50 foot one you can actually two three times the distance I did, yeah will there be you know 
uh, a little kickback in terms of um, is it really necessary to, to use a switch rod? Is it practical? Or let's say a spare rod. Is it practical to use, let's say, in rock stone? Well, in my personal opinion, yes, because um, let's say I'm in a boat and I'm using my single handed overhead casting rod. There's a lot of casts that I can do to get out of. If I'm in a squeeze and I need a fish over there, I see a fish rise off to my right and behind me there's a there's a bush. Um, I can easily do a roll cast to him and I don't have to go back there with my single handed rod. But if that fish is a good way out, I'm not going to be able to roll cast a single handed rod there. But a spare rod will allow me to cast there. It's going to allow me to get the momentum and get the weight and get the line loaded and get it out to him. Regardless of what's behind me. One of the things you have to understand, um, especially with differentiating spay rods and single-handed um, overhead casting rods, fly rods, is um, let's say my 9-foot, 6-weight fly rod, single-handed casting rod, um, the calculation to determine the size of fish that catches is add 3 to the number. So if you have a 4-weight um fly rod which is single handed overhead casting fly rod um, you add 3 to the numbers that's 7 4 plus 3 is 7 that 4 weight rod will allow you to catch a fish that's up to 7 pounds um, in weight um, so my 6 weight rod would allow me to catch a 9 pound fish now that's a pretty big fish it's not as big as some of the fish that are out there they're 10, 11, 12 pounds and you know um, in some parts of Brazil you have 15 and 20 pound fish especially peacock bass it, it won't be able to catch that but um, compared to let's say the Esquibo River and Rockstone and most of the places that I like to fish the, the Mahika River and um, in Mahikoni and even up the East Bank where I live and in Rockstone those places and a, a seven eight and nine pound peacock bass is a very big fish so um, that rod would be um, perfect that's just comfortable for catching those kind of fish if i run into a 10 11 pounder fish i'm gonna have some problems definitely but it's highly unlikely given the the type of um, bait that i choose to use the type of fly that i choose to use um, and if i am targeting a specific species or a specific size of fish i'm probably gonna go with something that's gonna handle that size of fish but that rod that I'm using today, it's it's gonna take me um it's gonna allow me to catch as big as a nine pound fish if there's a fish that size there waiting to be caught. So that's it for now. Thank you guys for tuning in and um I'm gonna be talking a lot more about my experience um using the fly rods and um, as I graduate into 
switch and spay casting um there's a lot of things that there that's going to be needed to talk about that's what i'm going to be talking about in my next video coming up next week thanks